You know, I love people that give games a fair shot and play them for all they're worth. But you know what I don't love? People that hate on a series without giving it a shot just because it's the popular thing to do. So let's talk about Sonic. I think he's a porcupine. He's been around for 30 years now and he's still canonically 15. Joking aside, it's amazing that this franchise, let alone Sega as a company, is still going strong today. With everything that you've probably heard on this World Wide Web, Sonic must really suck, right? And I, when I saw Sonic Mania, I thought to myself, we might finally have the, a second good Sonic game. Yeah, so there was, was a good... Was there a first? Well, yeah, was there a first? <laughs> Sonic CD. I think we're at Real the point talk. where we need to admit that this was never really a great franchise. Nope. And that we, they, we keep trying and trying and trying to find this thing that was never really actually no, there. Sonic was never good. Yeah, but it's Sonic the Hedgehog! Oh, jeez, what game is this? Uh, it's Sonic Adventure. Excellent. Is it good? No. Okay. It, it's horrible. <laughs> Gee, look at this. <laughs> oh, look at boy. this nightmare this game is. I thought you were done with Sonic games forever. What? No, we have to play all of them eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're hilarious. <laughs> okay. Aren't they hilarious? They are. I they're amazing. Does this have something to do with the fact that Sonic tweeted you recently? And now that I'm playing it again, the moment that this boss fight began, a new memory unearthed itself in my brain. It was a memory that I had suppressed for a long, long time, only to be realized at this very moment. This game sucks. It sucks really, really bad. Overall, this game is not good. It's awful. But it has little bits of good in it that we absolutely love. And today, I'm going to explain to you why regardless of your console allegiances, Sonic the Hedgehog, not a good game. Sorry. <coughs> to put it simply, the reason Sonic the Hedgehog is popular today is because a lot of people owned it in the past. You'll hear many Sonic fans today say that the franchise isn't as good as it once was. They say that Sonic controls poorly and that the games in general just don't play as well. Here's a mind-blowing fact. Sonic hasn't gotten worse. Your taste has gotten better. Sonic controls just as poorly as he always has, and there's really no evidence to now say that that's a bad ever take. going to change. Okay, I know that all the clips that I just showed have been up for a long time, and all the arguments that I could make have probably already been made in some way. But I wouldn't be showing them if I didn't have a reason. Because despite clear problems, people still follow these opinions. I'm clearly not saying it's bad to have opinions, that's why I have this channel. But most of the people that are saying that this franchise is bad, didn't come up with those opinions on their own. That's already bad by itself, but then if you just pay a little more attention, you see that the people in the videos that everyone is following seem to know just as much as the audience. For GameScoop, they just seemed uninformed, which isn't good because they're supposed to be professionals. They're on this show talking about games, that's their job, they're supposed to know what they're doing. But instead we just got some mean-spirited jokes, and a poke at Sonic 4. Because we haven't had enough of those. For Jared, I, I just don't know, it didn't sound like he knew what he was talking about. And this very first stage encompasses what everyone believes a Sonic game to be. A high emphasis on constant speed, a way to perpetually move forward, and minimal platforming. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm, that makes sense. Sonic the Hedgehog, a platforming series since 1991, should have minimal platforming. Yep, that makes sense. Mm -hmm, good stuff. I'm gonna pause here just for a little side note. I don't hate Jared. It's quite the opposite, actually. I think he can be really funny at times, and he knows a lot about games. He gives really well in-depth reviews, and I think he's worth a check out. But I don't recommend this review. And I know a lot of people agreed with his review, and that's completely fine. As I said before, I don't think it's bad to have opinions. It was just, I didn't think a lot of his points in this video were right. And again, that's his choice to make, it's subjective, it's opinion based. If he doesn't like the game, that's fine. I have plenty of games I don't like that loads of other people do. Someday down the road you might hear me talk about why I don't like very many Zelda games. And yeah, I know people would be upset with that, because people love Zelda, but it's just not for me. But I don't think that Zelda's a bad series, very far from it, clearly. It's all according to preference, and I just don't enjoy those games very much. But I still appreciate what those games are. Zelda is an amazing series, and it has almost all good games. Not all good games. My boy! But it's close. 
Jared clearly feels the same way about Sonic that I do Zelda, but it's not so much what he said as how he framed it. I just played through SA2 a little bit ago, and keeping his thoughts in mind, I didn't really run into anything that he complained about. Were there issues that he mentioned? Yeah, there were a bunch. But some of the smaller things just weren't quite right. He talked about the plot, and yeah, while I noticed some loose ends myself, I didn't see a bunch of glaring issues that he thought he saw. And contrary to what he thought, while still being a bit bland for some people, the hunting and mech stages weren't nearly as bad as he made them out to be. I'll admit the mashing got a little bit repetitive as time went on, but other than that, it really wasn't that bad. Sure, you might get a bit annoyed with how hard it is to find some of the things in the hunting stages, but that doesn't really ruin the experience. If anything, it adds a bit of replay value as you can go back and try and do better next time. But, as I've said a million times now, that was just my opinion. Jared thought the exact opposite. And that's fine, despite what the internet might say, he's allowed to do that. I disagree with some of his opinions, especially this one. And I don't think the things he's done outside of work are... something that should be replicated. But I don't hate him. The same can be said for the others. IGN, I think, does a good job. While I find some of their reviews a bit... questionable, I agree with what they're saying a lot of the times. Some of their critics need to get things sorted out, but otherwise I think they do a decent job at what they're supposed to. And the people on GameScoop can be really funny. I honestly think they're good. It was just... the mean-spirited jokes and all that shouldn't have happened. For them to see Sonic Mania and immediately think it's gonna be awful just because of what they've thought of the past isn't really fair. Could Mania have gone wrong? Yeah, like they said Sonic 4 happened. But if they just took the time and did the research that they were supposed to do, they would have seen who was making Sonic Mania. The only people working on it were talented people that have proven their worth over and over again. I'm very aware these clips are old, and 90% of the internet has gone over them already. But if they're still relevant, why not talk about them? As for Game Grumps and the other guy, well, it's a bit of a different story. The 8 Worlds news guy, I honestly hadn't really heard before. But somebody recommended him to me and I checked him out and it was... It was, it was an interesting watch, I guess. Seeing what someone else thought of Sonic 1 was... I mean, I mean, it was a watch. Game Grumps is a bit of a different story. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it, because this isn't a Game Grumps video, but I'm not really a fan of them. And no, it's not because they don't like Sonic, that's, that's ridiculous, why, why would that be a thing? While that has played a part in causing their fanbase to bully the Sonic fanbase, that wasn't really why I decided to leave them. It was more so controversies that they've been in that they haven't acknowledged at all. I let maybe one or two of them slide, but after so many happened and they just didn't talk about them, I couldn't support that anymore. But this is not a Game Grumps video, and even if I don't support them, I just wanted to make it clear I do not hate them regardless of what they've done. Nor do I hate the 8 Worlds news guy, despite how little I've seen of him. These were just examples that I knew of that I could use to get my point across, and if I haven't made that clear, then I'm sorry and I hope that you understand now. Now that you know I respect these people, I'm hoping that you can respect my opinions. This part wasn't originally in the video, uh, I, this actually added like a whole six minutes on and none of it was actually scripted so I'm kinda just going with it. But the more I thought about it, the more guilty I felt, because I really don't hate any of these people. But I also didn't want to give the impression that I did. Jared's already been through a lot, and IGN gets enough hate every day. The only reason any of these people were brought up at all is to show that they have an impact. Whether they realize it or not, what they do affects a lot of people. Somebody might think one thing, and then it, their opinion is immediately uprooted because they watched a video. I talked to a guy that thought that Sonic was horrible for a long time just because he watched a video of a guy beating the dead bush of Sonic 06. It wasn't until Mania that he actually gave the series a shot, which is how a lot of people are now. Look, it would be one thing if it was just jokes, but it's not. These are real people that think these things, and everyone else that follows those ideas push it off to everyone that enjoys these games. What I want to know is, why? Besides the factor of all these critics, why do people choose to hate this franchise? That's what I'm going to find out today, and you will too, maybe, if you choose to stay around.
subscribe, maybe. I don't know. One of the biggest criticisms that Sonic gets is his fanbase. I feel like that should be talked about before any of the real media because it seems to pour into the perception of the games. It makes no sense, but it happens anyway. What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions are <laughs> Sonic fans, also classified as blues in the wild, just in case you're up for some hunting, are some of the most toxic people on the internet. You say one bad thing about the Cerulean Speedster, and they will hunt you down. Sometimes they're justified, and most of the time it's far from it. They can be extremely annoying, and sometimes they're just outright stupid. They tear outsiders apart, and then they tear each other apart. First, as someone who has received very vivid death threats and have had to go into hiding out of fear of my family's life, just because I do a dumb show online where I call Sonic slow, Personal attacks and threats are not okay. Simple things like Sonic's personality, how they've handled Knuckles for like the past 10 years, and, of all things, animation quality. It doesn't matter what it is. If you say it, a fight can break out. And there's no defending that. It's stupid, childish, and it needs to stop. Yet, that's not how the internet works. There's gonna be those people out there that act childish and ruin everything. The best we can do is just ignore them or cancel them, because, you know. All of that said, the biggest sore thumb of all of this is fan creations. OCs, games, fanfiction, the list just keeps going. That might sound a bit mean, like you're criticizing somebody's tastes and abilities, but as you're probably aware, it's not that simple. Some of this <clears throat> art is just stuff like Sanic, drawn by children. But then Here I come. this is what everyone thinks of when they hear the words Sonic fan art. There is awful tracing of original art that looks really, really good. Fat Eggman, because I guess he just wasn't egg enough. Um, feet. Yeah, there's um, there's a lot of that. OCs! Yeah, you've probably heard of Ronaldo the Raccoon, right? No, you haven't, I invented. Then there's the video aspect of it with things like this. <gasps> ah! Oh, no! Ooh, what's this? People watch this stuff. Oh yeah. There's also this guy that uploads like the same thing every day, sometimes multiple times a day. It's just really, really bad edits of the original Meow scene from the first movie trailer. This guy has over a million subs. Hmm, that's weird, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Hey man! Much like the other topics, this has been beaten to death. But, I gotta say it, there are some awful fan games out there. Y'all wanna play Sonic in Istanbul? No? But why not? So yeah, just like you'd imagine, there's a lot of bad. Like, a lot of bad. And I didn't even mention people like Chris Chan. But, believe it or not, despite how numerous and disturbing this trash may be, shockingly, it's in the minority. This might be a surprise, but the Sonic fanbase has some of the most talented and skilled people in all of gaming. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Cringy and stupid fan art? We'll take a look at Sonic Skyline. The artist... I can't say that name without laughing, I'm sorry. Clearly cares about what they're doing, and everything feels inspired. And there's a great story to go along with it. I didn't specifically mention any bad fanfiction, mainly because I don't want to read that, but you know it's there. Even then, Skyline shows that the bad doesn't speak for everything. Don't want to play awful fan games? Well, what about playing Sonic Utopia, Project Heroes, Roboblast 2? I'm slowly realizing that a lot of these are just mishmashes of different words. Or my personal favorite, Sonic Freedom. 
an animator going by what is going on with these names, created a game that plays like Sonic CD, with things like the Super Peelout and Spin Dash returning. But he also created a new mid-air spin attack thing. It reminds me of Ori in the Blind Forest, which I like. I thought it would be a little awkward at first, but as soon as I tried it with a controller instead of a keyboard, it worked really well. It's only a small demo right now, and uh, it has a few bugs, but it's super fun. And I didn't even mention the hand-drawn animations. I better move on before I talk about this with the rest of the video, but the fact that it uses that art style alone makes me love it even more. What about those awful videos plugging this platform? Well, you could go watch videos by somebody like Bayliner Productions. They make great 3D animations, taking almost a sitcom-like style to the already great personalities they've built up for characters over the years. Y'all should check them out, they really care about what they're making compared to- Yeah. Don't like sitcoms? Want something more... Serious? Well, remember Sad AM? That old 90s show that ran alongside the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog? What if I told you that a group made entirely of fans was working on a season 3 that never got to see the light of day? Fully animated scenes are being produced with an art style and aesthetic that matches the original. Just look at this clip. Man, I knew the place would be calmer with Robotnik gone, but this is downright creepy. Oh yeah, there's voice acting too. Duh. There's obviously not a lot of stuff to listen to at the moment. What we do have right now is really good. They sound almost exactly like their 90s counterparts. As of writing this, they just released a trailer with a newly vamped up theme song sung by the lead singer of Crush 40. That's dedication. Not sure when it's coming out, but I can wait. And hey, if you don't want to wait, you can always read the comic. This was started in 2009, over a decade ago. That's insane. Yes, some early art might be a little bit... rough, but that's to be expected as programmers back then were not the best. But just check out the pages that came out recently. It looks amazing. The action scenes are intense and characters look like they have real emotion. I'll leave links to the comic and their YouTube channel in the description because they really deserve to be checked out. It almost looks like official stuff from Archie or IDW. Speaking of which... Yeah, I know what you're thinking. How is this still the fanbase? These are official comics. But that's the funny thing. The fans are more in touch with this comic than officials on Sonic Team are. Most, if not all, of the artists that worked on Archie Comics and now work on IDW are just freelance artists that want to make Sonic look as good as he can be. And the writing is... absolutely some of the best Sonic writing we've gotten in a long time. Not that it has a lot of competition. Some of my favorite people are Tracy Yardley, who I love the art style of, Jim and Mash because his inking job is always great, and I'm gonna go ahead and make some people mad, Ian Flynn, because obviously the writing. Say what you will about him, guys, but there's a reason that he's working on Frontiers. He's only doing what he can to fix the franchise, he's not trying to mess anything up. I get it if you disagree with things like how he writes Shadow, or how he makes characters interact with each other, but this is modern Sonic now, we have to live with it. So the best we can do is try to hire people like him that'll do their best to fix everything. And I mean, come on, he fixed Tales from Forces, that's gotta mean something, right? Anyway, my point was that there are so many average fans that are working on this official stuff and making it so much better than it could be. And now because of all of that, people like Evan Stanley are known around the world because of everything they've done on this stuff. They're not average people anymore. And of course, there's Tyson Hess. You might have heard of him before, he's not well known, I'm not sure if you know. Uh, he did a few small things, he did some illustrations on the comics, he was an animation director for a tiny game called Sonic Mania, not sure if anybody's heard of it. And uh, there was something else. What was it? Oh yeah. He fixed this thing! Look, I know there are bad things. There's a lot that I could not physically mention in one video. And believe me, I tried, but I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But while being notoriously bad at times, Sonic is not the worst it could be. But even with that in mind, people try to use old videos by someone like Sammy as leverage saying that nope, we're just petty babies that don't know how to take criticism. Yeah, I'm sure that when Sammy was younger, he had strong feelings for Sonic. That's how a lot of kids are. I know I was definitely that way, and I know many other people were too. And it's not like he was just a Sonic fan. He did this for Pac-Man, Mario, many other characters. It's not just Sonic. If anything, this shows that we have the ability to laugh at ourselves. 
which sadly is something that many other fan bases lack. The only reason that things like Pokemon are safe are because literally everyone knows who Pikachu is. There isn't a single child that isn't like, OH I WANT A PIKACHU, because they all like Pikachu. But so many children be like, oh, I love video games. And I'm like, oh, what's your favorite video game? And they'll be like, Pokemon. Shut up. And maybe I've run into one or two that like Sonic. But even then, it's not because they've played the games, it's because they've watched the movies. Which again, is great. It's showing a younger generation the blue hedgehog. However, it's also neglecting to show them the games. Not that that's one of the company's faults. It's literally supposed to be a movie. But, I mean, it is kind of making a generation miss out. And in case you couldn't follow along there, you know darn good and well why I brought Pokemon up, you little furries. Go ahead and make fun of Sally all you want, but you know that Lopunny is causing problems. I guess to try and end this, the best thing I can say is, you know we're not the worst. We could definitely be better, and the improvement starts with us. So, if you want to improve, we'll get going. Change it up. But, we're not the worst. I can't say I'm speaking from experience or from seeing any of this, but I have seen so many people complain about different fan bases such as Pokemon, Fire Emblem, Zelda, just whining about specific things, and I, I can't say I've seen this. Now I know that we can relate as we've complained about things like Sonic's color, his shoes, how he's designed, his quill length, all of that garbage. But, I, I just, I, I don't know, I can't say I can speak on that because I haven't personally seen it from other fan bases. but, I don't know, people just complain. So, I guess that just makes me say, if those fan bases are allowed to complain, why aren't we? I really hope that made sense because that was entirely unscripted. Not, not, not the whole video, just that one section that I just said. But if nothing made sense, then please leave a comment and I'll try and respond and make it as coherent as I physically can. I cannot promise anything because my mental state while making this video deteriorated very rapidly, but I'll do my best. Anyway, if you got to this point, I'm really thankful that you were willing to watch it. I, I don't know if you agreed with anything, disagreed, if you even liked it, if you like me, I don't know. But, I mean, if you got this far, then you, you probably enjoyed it. Maybe. Hopefully. <coughs> I'm really bad at not scripting things. Anyway, I had a lot of fun making this video. I'm really sad that I didn't get everything that I wanted out of it. But, there are some pretty good reasons for that. Basically, my script had probably... Hold on, let me look. Oh, yep, that makes sense. 92 voice lines. And with the time that my video was already at in the editing process, that would put my video most likely around probably the hour and a half mark, which... Oh, I did not have the time for that. Believe me, I think it could have been really cool, but with the topics that I was going to talk about, I could make so many other videos out of those. If you're curious, after talking about the people that worked on the Sonic Archie comics and how those were all fans, I was going to lead into talking about the comics, as well as the shows that came out recently, and you know, every other Sonic show. going to talk about why the comics ended for Archie, which, if you know, involves Ken Penders, and that could be probably like a 30 minute video on its own. I'm sure I'll do that at some point. And then that was gonna segue, honestly quite well, into my kind of advertisement for my future videos where I'll be talking about the games. And I mean, I would have had a lot of fun making that, but again, that would take a lot of time and a lot of energy. And if you have been following my channel up to this point, then you know that I've been trying to get this type of video out for quite a while. Like, over a year. And I just don't have the kind of time to try and do that again. It would probably take me another year to get that video done with how my life is. I have to deal with an outside job and constantly coming home and only having a few hours to work each night, which 
for a video like this, that's not a lot of time. And along with that, I've been doing other projects such as voice acting for another guy's channel, which, I mean, you might see at some point, I'm not sure. I've been doing commissions for some other people. Hey, if you haven't checked out Little Z's channel, I did a thumbnail on there, you should try and do that, that, that was pretty cool. If you didn't know, I like Smash Bros. Speaking of which, I also have some Smash Bros videos up, and those took time to edit. Not nearly as much, which might surprise you, but it still took time. As well as during the entire time that I was writing this script and doing that, I had just graduated school. So that was a huge chunk in my day too. So along with school, which I was also working at the time of, I only had a few hours. That's not a lot of time. And believe me, I just spent all summer trying to work and get this video done. And it still didn't happen. I did not get this video done during the summer. But I realized that if I want to talk about Sonic Frontiers right when it comes out, I'm going to need to get this video done. And I couldn't do that if I was going to do the entire script that I had written out. So while it's sad to see it go to waste, I'm glad I finally got this video done. Even if all of my two subscribers are watching. Yeah, I know I have way more than two subscribers, which I'm actually going to touch on for a second. I am extremely thankful that I have over 2,000 subscribers now. It's really shocking. I kind of reached it in like, I got, I got it in like a month, which I didn't expect because I had my channel for over a year. But that kind of brings into my mind a bit of a worry I have because the only reason I got all of those subscribers, all of you if you're watching, is because of that stupid video I made for Sonic Prime. I mean, first off, I wasn't expecting it to blow up like that, that was kind of insane. And I'm really glad it did because it helped me to become a YouTube member, but I'm really hoping that I didn't just get subscribers for that type of specific content because if I'm quite honest, it was extremely low effort. It did not take a lot of energy or time. Yeah, it took me about two hours to get all the audio edited and to throw all the sketches together, but guys, that type of video is not hard to do. Anybody can do it. I mean, as long as you have basic drawing ability, which I mean, I know that's hard to come by, but I mean, still, you can do it. Believe me, I'm glad people liked the video, but I do not want that video to be the reason I have subs. I want people to be subscribed and to watch my videos because they enjoy them. That's why as soon as that video was done, I went back to my basic Smash Bros gameplays because I enjoy doing those. When me and my friends sit down to do those videos, we have a lot of fun. And I don't want to just do Smash Bros videos. Sure, I mentioned Little Z, but blah blah blah, I don't want to do those. I mean, yeah, I do- Ah, oh, this is so difficult to put into words. I love making those videos, but those are not the kind of videos that I want to be known for. I want to be known for this. These kinds of videos, where I can just sit down and talk about things that I like. I love editing those videos, and I love playing that game. Smash Bros is probably my favorite game, but it is not who I want to be. It is not what I want to be known for. I want to be known for making people laugh, doing funny edits, semi-decent animations. I know this episode was probably a little sketchy, but well, I mean, I'm kind of an amateur animator. I'm not the best. Maybe I'll get better, hopefully. I, I don't know, we'll see. But basically, I, I want to be known for this. I want people to subscribe for this, and so, I'm gonna probably make a big mistake here, and honestly, releasing this video I'm probably gonna lose subs anyway, but if you subscribed just because you want to see more of that video, please unsubscribe. You're not in the right place. There are so many YouTube short channels that you could check out, and I'm sure you'll enjoy them 5 million times more than me, because I am highly doubtful right now that any of my subscribers are watching. That might actually be a little harsh. I'm sure that at least a hundred of my subscribers are watching. But even then, that might be a little bit generous. As looking at the statistics, which I might have been able to put up, I do not know, I'll find out. Barely any of my subscribers watch the Smash Bros videos, which, to test, I put Sonic in the thumbnail of both of those videos. 
and they still did about as well as they normally would. Sure, the views went up a tiny bit faster than they normally would, which, if you've seen my older ones, then you'd know that I got about 100 views maybe within two weeks. So yeah, I gained the views a tiny bit faster, but it didn't go up nearly as much as I thought it might. So, again, I'm gonna ask, if you're subscribed for that stupid short, please, just, just get off, leave my video, leave my channel, this ain't the place for you. It hurts me to say that, and I don't want to exclude anybody, because believe me, if you enjoy the video, I want you to stay. But, if you're subscribed for those types of shorts, you're not gonna get anything. Actually, you know what, okay. I, I will clarify, every now and then I might release an animated short that I kind of just felt like making for no reason. But, in terms of constant flow for that type of video... <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. So, yeah, thanks, but just no. Anyway, that's enough ranting, I probably have spent enough time on that topic. In terms of Sonic, he's come a long way. From a time where he was one of the coolest video game icons on the planet, to being one of the biggest laughing stocks everyone's ever seen, to now being honestly back on top, he's come a long way. And I'm hoping that that keeps on coming. So far, 2022 is coming out to be the best year Sonic has had in a long time. And I'm really happy. Sonic Movie 2 turned out to be an amazing movie. Maybe not in terms of an actual movie, but in terms of Sonic glory... That's gonna be a bad phrase to remember later. It turned out to be really good. And right now, Frontiers is turning out to be amazing. Right now, the game is not released yet. I am hoping this video gets done before that so I can get a video out for Frontiers. I am hoping. But, right now, we got two vocal tracks which sound amazing, as well as some other soundtrack pieces that sound just as good. And we've gotten multiple trailers, along with hearing how good Roger's voice acting can be when given proper direction, which believe me, is another point I was gonna make in my video. But, again, time constraints as well as life, I just can't do that. However, I am so glad that 2022 is turning out to be a beautiful year, both for Sonic and my channel. So, I guess all I can say is, keep on running, Sonic. The possibilities are endless.